uh, entering, in, coming in from Columbia also. And uh, I appreciate uh, having uh, Representative Joe Wilson here with us and honored to have him with us. And thank you for your leadership and support of your real estate, uh, the, the real estate industry and home ownership. Well, Mark, thank, thank you very much. And hey, back to uh, Dave. Uh, he understated it. I've worked with four generations of uh, Lockwoods and Wilkerson. So I, yep. um, so uh, it, it, it's a humbling experience. So I was just thinking of the multiple generations, David. So this is good. And 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 we hope there's more to come. So you yeah. know, this is this is the time of year we have been in your office in past years up until the pandemic. I really, really last year. Uh, we knew that it was not possible to be in your office because of the pandemic. Everyone was hoping that this year would be different. We would be in your office again. I miss being in Washington in April, May timeframe. It is beautiful there, but most importantly, it is such a special time when our realtors can gather with you in your office and visit about the issues that are impacting the real estate industry. And I got to tell you, we, we're just counting on next year. We're counting on being with you next year. Uh, I think the whole world is, but in particular, being in Washington to do, to do our legislative meetings. One thing that we know last year and this year, the ability to talk to our, our elected officials virtually uh, means that we record sessions, we get them out, we allow all of the 26,000 uh, realtor members in South Carolina to have access to these recordings so that they can hear the conversation, whereas in years past, they can't attend in Washington. So that's the good part of, about doing this virtually. Mars? Absolutely. Uh, you know, normally, David, we have at least 100, 120, 130 people that do travel to Washington and um, that come up from, from South Carolina. And I, it's always one of my favorite trips because you really find out where our representatives are, where, uh, you know, where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. And uh, so I'm looking forward to this session with uh, Representative Wilson and, uh, and hearing a little bit more about the last 12 months and sort of what we've got coming up ahead. And, and Joe, and I'm going to say um, I'm hosting another call for a very large contingent of real estate folks that come up at 10. I may drop off just a couple minutes early and Morris will wrap up. But I've got a question for you. It's the most important question yes. for you today. And that is how's Roxanne and the boys doing? <laughs> well, hey, each one is doing great. Thank you, David. And of course, hey, uh, I'm, uh, yesterday's front page of the state paper actually had a positive article about a member of the Wilson family. Okay. And, uh, and he made a very substantial uh, real estate investment uh, understatement, $61.7 million, uh, Julian. Uh, and, uh, and so I can tell you that we appreciate real estate. Well, actually, um, uh, I can prove it uh, with his success. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, but the bottom line, I'm really grateful. Roxanne's doing well, uh, our family's doing well. Uh, something that uh, is um, uh, an indication of advancing age uh, my uh, oldest grandson, my namesake, uh, Addison III, uh, graduates from high school uh, on the 29th. And then he, uh, and this relates to real estate, he'll be going to a school upstate. I think the name of it is Clemson. Uh, and so I'm appalled. And no, no, I'm very pleased. Okay. And so, uh, and he's, uh huh. Okay. Well, hey, you got him. Uh, and, uh, and he's going to be studying architecture. Uh, and so, and so he needs the real estate industry uh, to do, to, um, to do his profession. So uh, that's the bottom line. The family's doing uh, quite well. And then of course, my yeah. youngest uh, is with Hoffman and Hoffman uh, heating and air, industrial heating and air conditioning. Again, we want y'all to um, bring more industry to South Carolina. And, uh, and, um, uh, and, and then uh, of course, there's this guy called the Attorney General, uh, Alan Wilson. Uh, and, and I'm very proud of him. He is um, uh, working uh, in every way uh, to promote limited government uh, in our country and, and stop the uh, growth of government that uh, will uh, ultimately have uh, catastrophic uh, impact, particularly on the young people of our country. Uh, bottom line is I'm grateful to be serving and, and look forward to your input. And, um, and hey, I'm excited to see uh, real estate sales. I mean, gosh, and hey, we want to encourage as many people as we can to leave New York, uh, San Francisco, Chicago. I, I still remember doing loan closings uh, with people from Chicago, and I would be going through the closing statement, I would show them the annual taxes, and they'd say, is that the monthly tax? I said, no, that's the annual tax. Okay, well, it's gotten much worse up there. And, Great. So, uh, and so we want to encourage good people to move here uh, and uh, from around the country, but particularly in high tax areas. Gosh, 
uh, what a, a wonderful lifestyle we have here. Absolutely, agreed, agreed. David, you want to kick it off with with a question for the for the congressman? Well, I'd, I'd be glad to. Um, so throughout the pandemic, you know the residential real estate market and the positive impact it's had on the on the economy. And I would say the commercial sector, which I'm involved in, has bounced back very nicely Good. as as well. But access to residential real estate market has been limited by the 50 year record shortage of affordable homes. And, and Nick was talking about affordable housing in Florence and the cost of affordable housing. What can Congress do to address affordable housing shortage in this country, though? Well, for, uh, my view is, uh, again, I want to be a private sector. I really want uh, your, you to come up with the home builders or whatever uh, as to uh, how this should be addressed. But I don't want I, I am not in favor of uh, additional um, uh, government uh, an intrusion by way of whatever term they want to use, uh, investment. Uh, it, it, uh, it, uh, I, I want this to be a private sector um, initiative. Uh, and I, I have faith in uh, realtors and builders uh, that you can address this without uh, the government intruding. Thank you, Congressman. Um, you know, if more residential housing is made available as part of our efforts to improve the nation's infrastructure, opportunities to access this wealth building, the wealth building benefits of home ownership will increase alongside employment levels and economic activity. Uh, a recent study estimates that the U.S. has developed an underbuilding gap of 5.5 million housing units over the last 20 years. This translates into a 4.4 trillion underinvestment in housing, $4.4 trillion underinvestment. Even relatively modest steps taken now to reduce this gap will unleash tremendous economic activity and create millions of new jobs. Uh, realtors are supporting the Bipartisan Housing Supply and Affordability Act and the Neighborhood Homes Investment Act. Can we count on your support of these bills? Well, y'all need to get the bills to me and um, or to Leah Grace, all right? But I, sure. uh, again, uh, hey, uh, over the weekend, I went to the Poultry Festival in Baseburg, Liesel, and uh, last year, uh, sadly, it had been canceled, so uh, I really hadn't been uh, on that side of the county except last year uh, to go to Sheely's Barbecue, and so, uh, but um, as I went out US-1, and um, I, I was startled at all the new uh, housing developments, and, and I'm not talking about huge homes. These are nice, uh, and uh, some uh, appear to be almost like micro homes, whatever. Uh, but uh, in, in minimal yards, all right? And uh, even though I like to do yard work, I can understand other people don't. Uh, but um, it, it was really exciting to me to see the level of development uh, in, in areas uh, that were just um, startling. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm glad that, um, uh, and hopefully in the communities I represent that this is being addressed, Morris. But I, uh, I, uh, I and hey, let's get, uh, I, I'm thrilled about the interest rates, gee whiz. Uh, I still Absolutely. remember Jimmy Carter, okay? People need to remember him, 17%. Uh, and uh, I can remember the, uh, when I had loan closings, uh, they, they were um, home builders coming to me to refinance before they went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay, and so this really should uh, be uh, an extraordinary time uh, with interest rates. I know that uh, refinancing was very significant to me this year. Uh, and, um, and gosh, the savings uh, are, are, what a time to buy uh, with the interest rates. And so I, I um, to me, the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the elements are there uh, with low interest rates for people to buy homes that should be affordable. Sure, it, you know, it was sort of a perfect storm with the, the lumber prices and everything all at once. And it's, it has definitely put some pressure on builders and developers and, you know, and you also have local government, uh, you know, that's stepping in and putting moratoriums in place. And, you know, there, there are just a lot of different things that are, that are happening right now, for sure. And I know you know that, and, and, uh, but it is, there is still development out there for sure. And then something that I've seen, uh, and it, it's startling to me, you'll go through almost any neighborhood, there's, uh, there's so many abandoned homes, mm -hmm. okay? And, and these are not, and, and these are uh, in nice neighborhoods, okay? Uh, but um, uh, the, um, 
the people who have uh, lived there have passed away and, and uh, there is a, uh, apparently a delay by uh, the next generation to um, actually um, uh, occupy and, and um, redevelop the home. Somehow that needs to be encouraged, but it, uh, hey, that's where the realtors need to call people and say, hey, you've got a, a house it, uh, uh, that uh, is, uh, it will deteriorate if it's not occupied. Sure. And, uh, and, um, and, and it's sort of simple that you have to explain that to people, but uh, I, I would hope that realtors would, uh, uh, it, it's really clear right now where the abandoned homes are, it's called dandelions or in the front yard. And, um, and, and everywhere I go, I see, uh, uh, these aren't mansions, uh, but uh, really nice um, homes uh, that are, uh, are, are vacant. Absolutely, absolutely. It, 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 Joe, this is maybe somewhat of a softball on it, but I want you to jump on it. Um, yeah. you know, the discussion about changes to the 1031 like kind exchanges, tax deferred exchanges, yeah. is going to impact, if, if it's pushed through, it's going to impact the residential industry because of so many developers who use 1031 as a means of developing subdivisions, developers developing multifamily housing, but also in the commercial sector, yeah. which really drives so much of, of our commercial business and, and what happens there. Uh, tell, us, tell us what you think about the changes proposed to 1031 exchanges. Well, well I'm concerned with the uh, 1031 exchange, uh, with the other tax increases uh, that they have not really explained. Uh, uh, clearly, it's going to destroy jobs. Uh, and, uh, and, um, and, and also, there's some misstatements of fact, all right? That um, two things. One, that only people uh, who make $400,000 or more could be paying more taxes. That's not true. Uh, and uh, indeed, it's going to ripple through uh, to all of us paying more taxes. And then the uh, flippant uh, 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 response that, okay, we're going to get corporations to pay taxes, okay, from like 21 to 28%. Uh, well, corporations don't pay taxes. They pass on the uh, cost uh, to consumers. And, uh, and then, um, and what they're proposing uh, will also be uh, absolutely uh, d job destroying because we would end up with the highest corporate taxes possibly in the world. And so uh, over and over again, um, uh, the uh, proposals that are being made uh, uh, are, are the exact reverse of um, what we had for the last four years of record unemployment, okay, with uh, uh, the lowest level of unemployment in history for African-Americans, for Hispanics, for Asian-Americans. Uh, what an achievement. Uh, and now the uh, proposals that are coming up um, by the new administration uh, over and over again are gonna destroy jobs and, uh, and uh, simply grow government. There will be more government jobs, uh, more uh, administrative bureaucrats, you name it. Oh, hey, um, it, let's get personal, they're gonna name, they're, They've got an extraordinary proposal to increase the number of IRS agents. That's nice. That, okay, that does increase jobs. Uh, but um, uh, we, we've just got to have um, free market. We know that free market principles work. I, I just um, was so grateful to be part of the tax reductions that created jobs. And, that, and we know that that works. We know that tax increases destroy jobs. You, know, you talk about jobs, um, and so I'm going to shift over to a jobs issue, and I know you're familiar with the PRO Act. So when you look at, at NAR, National Association of Realtors, we've got 1.4 million members, and almost 90% of those are independent contractors. And there's a lot yeah. of discussion with the PRO Act about how, in, how you classify independent contractors' employees. And, and what we're asking for is support in the longstanding federal recognition of real estate professionals to continue to operate as independent contractors in this country. And, and I really appreciate that y'all gave me that question in advance and I had one word next to it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There's no equivocation. Okay. Yes. Well, Congressman Wilson, um, the, uh, you know, the, as stewards of the right to own and use and transfer private property, our livelihoods and businesses as realtors depend upon an open housing market that's free from discrimination. Our economy, communities, and the American people suffer when discrimination and segregation constrain home ownership uh, and limit the intergenerational wealth that it builds. Yet more than 50 years after the passage of the Fair Housing Act, the home ownership rates for African Americans, Hispanics, and Asian Americans continues to lag behind uh, that 
of white Americans. What can Congress do to help and what, what can we do to help and how can we improve this? Well, hey, I, I, again, uh, I want equality of opportunity. And so, uh, and I need y'all's help. Uh, if anybody ever sees uh, discrimination or whatever, it needs to be reported, uh, EEOC or whatever. And, um, but we need equality of opportunity. Uh, that does not mean equality of outcome. And so, uh, and, um, but equality of opportunity is what I support. And, um, and I, I, hey, to me, I've always, it's been um, really basic to my uh, view of free markets. And that is that we all do better if everybody participates. But if you actually keep uh, people out based on uh, race or whatever discrimination you have, you're hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you're hurting uh, the general public uh, and individuals, but um, uh, to me, the, um, the uh, hallmark of our free market capitalist system is everybody having uh, equal opportunity to participate. Absolutely. Joe, you know, the current administration, um, they recently introduced the American Families Plan, and, and NAR has peeled that back, and there's a lot of concerns with, with the American Families plan, and, and they believe that certain components of the plan will really impact economic growth. And in my business, it'll depress commercial real estate. What's your take on the American Families plan? Uh, hey, David, uh, it's $1.8 trillion, okay? Uh, and then uh, and, and the vast majority of the American people get confused. Okay, 1.8 here and, uh, and, and 2.1 trillion here and uh, $1.7 trillion over there. Yes, it is. Uh, there are so many different quote, plans they have. It's called $6 trillion. It's called inflation, all right? Uh, even the state paper, quoting even the Washington Post, if they say that the free spending uh, could create inflation, uh, this really should be a banner headline, not um, uh, buried uh, within the newspaper. But that's what's coming. And, uh, and because you just cannot give everything free to everybody. It's not free. Uh, and... Uh, and the, the consequence, particularly for the uh, younger people, is that they will be paying for this in the future, okay, with the debt. But the people of age uh, uh, are, who have saved money uh, as the uh, value of their dollar uh, uh, is impacted, um, the, uh, the, um, the free spending, that's a polite term, uh, by the Washington Post, uh, is putting um, the young people of my uh, children, grandchildren uh, at risk, and yours too. And, uh, and it sounds good, everything free for everybody. I'm just, it's, it, I, I don't even know how they keep up with everything free. Uh, every time I turn around, I find out something else that they wanna give free. Uh, uh, hey, uh, if you take a job, they'll give you, uh, the government's gonna give you $1,200 to take a job. What do you mean the government giving you money to take a job? Uh, possibly you should be, um, uh, working to get a job, and it, it's, it's called being paid for what you do. And hey, we've seen systems like this, okay? I, um, I, I remember uh, uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, they had a uh, system, it was really interesting. Uh, the people, uh, uh, the government uh, pretended to pay the people, and the people pretended to work. And so, uh, and there was a consequence of that. It no longer exists. And so those systems don't work. I mean, just everything free for everybody um, uh, it, it really sounds very appealing. And when you have a news media that uh, is wildly enthusiastic about it, um, uh, uh, it, it, it sounds wonderful. Everything free for everybody. And then not just in America, okay? Um, as we see, they're offering this to uh, people worldwide who uh, can cross an open border. And, uh, and they're doing studies. Why are people coming to the United States? Well, it could be because everything's free. Not like that commercial free, free, free. Yes. Somebody's got to pay for it. Somebody's got to pay for it. That's right. uh, it, it it's, it's just not, you, you, you always, hey, I'm, I'm going to go back. I want equality of opportunity where everybody has an opportunity. Uh, and, and hey, that's if, when I think about real estate and realtors, um, and I think of how hardworking uh, realtors are and enterprising they are and what they do for people um, without government telling them everything to do, um, right. that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Congressman Wilson. Uh, before we go, one last question. Uh, yeah. We've all been in lockdown over the last 12 months, and mm -hmm. I know I got to spend a lot more time with my family, some days more than I wanted to, uh, but, <laughs> but I was very thankful to be able to spend some time with them. And uh, 
you know, some of us picked up some new hobbies, different things like that. Is there anything that the Wilson family did that, uh, that was interesting and, and something new over the last 12 months? Well, Morris, I'm actually seeing the benefit of it right now. Okay. Uh, Lowe's and Home Depot have done very well with me. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and, and so, uh, and, and the, the consequence last fall uh, and this spring for the first time, I've gotten carried away with putting fertilizer out. Okay. Maybe. And I've learned a lesson. <laughs> and they have these little scoops. That's how much I was using. Well, I found out, forget that, dump it, okay? Dump it. <laughs> and, and so um, uh, we have our azaleas, our camellias. Uh, I, I love working in the yard. Our border grass is now two feet high. It used to be four inches high, and I thought it was doing good. Uh, no, hey, um, I, I've, uh, I've gotten carried away putting fertilizer out, and now I see the consequence of it. And it's sure. never been a more beautiful spring. And sure. how fortunate we are to live in the Midlands of South Carolina. Thank God how beautiful it is here. And I, um, uh, on the way here today, to see the honeysuckle blooming, okay? Um, I, uh, who, who would ever imagine um, uh, over and over again how fortunate we are. But no, what I've done during the pandemic, uh, my sport uh, is uh, working in the yard, uh, but I have learned a new skill and that is putting out fertilizer. Good deal. Well, good. I'm going to have to ride by and check out the Wilson yard. Okay, yeah, it, 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 it has the approach of a jungle right now. But anyway, Absolutely. come on by. Uh, it's downtown Springdale. Everybody's welcome to come by. Well, thank Joe, you. It, Joe and staff, I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop off and Morris will close, but I just want to personally thank you for all that you do for the real estate industry. I thank you for what you do for me personally and my family. I, I, it is such an honor to call you a friend, no, but it's here. also uh, it's such an honor to call you my elected official. So thank you. Well, well hey, I'm honored to represent y'all. And, and again, five generations as I'm thinking of the Lockwood family. But hey, and, 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 hey I'm going to have to drop off in a minute too, but I also want to urge you, if you get a chance, I'm going to be on Newsmax uh, at uh, uh, 10 o'clock. And so um, uh, discussing uh, the uh, National Guard Cyber Support uh, Act that I've introduced, uh, as we see the consequence of the colonial pipeline today, uh, uh, and um, that this can be real world uh, of uh, impact. And so we've got to be uh, ever vigilant in, in cyber uh, conflict today, but and we, it affects real estate too. So as, hey, as we conclude, thank you all very much. And hey, again, Rhea, Leah Grace Denny is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, 202-225-2452. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Representative Wilson. Thank you so much for joining all of South Carolina Realtors today and have a good rest of your week and we'll see you next year. Well, hey, Realtors are so important. I can't wait for you to be in the office, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you much. And, hey, come by in the meantime. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.